Welcome back. This is the fifth video that we're doing on arterial blood gas interpretation and we're going to jump right into some more examples. So let's get going. Okay, number one. This is going to be our blood gas. pH is 7.55. Our CO2 is 25. And our bicarb is 23. Now in this video, what I'm going to do down here is is just write effect on pH. We didn't do this in the last set of examples, but I, I think this, this may help. And you may have got through the last examples fine and had no problem, but if but if you did have some issues, then maybe maybe having this effect on pH here will help. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same process we used. We're gonna use this ABC process where we look at the acid base first, then we try and identify a primary disturbance, and then we're gonna look whether there's any compensation for that disturbance. So let's get into it. So first, <clears throat> let's look at the pH here. It's 7.55. We look over at our normal range and see that the higher end is 7.45. So this is outside of our normal range. This pH is increased. Okay, this is an alkalosis. Um, so we know that if our pH is on the higher end of the normal range and outside of the normal range, then we have an alkalosis. So let's write alkalosis here. And you can start to see how systematic this becomes. So we identify what the pH problem is, we have an alkalosis, and then we look, go forward to look at what the cause of that is. So now let's look at our CO2. Our CO2 is 25 here. We can see from our normal value that that's well below our normal range. So our CO2 is decreased. Now down here what we're going to do is what effect does that have on the pH? What effect is this CO2 being decreased? What does that do to the pH? And we know here that if you decrease your pCO2, you increase your pH. Okay, so we have the CO2 is increasing our pH. And then uh, this, what, what's this bicarb doing? So the bicarb is within normal range, right? So this is normal. Um, so what effect is that having on the pH? Well, it's not really having an effect on the pH. It's not, it's not pushing it either up or pushing it down. It's kind of keeping it where it should be. So we have a normal bicarb, a low pH, uh, sorry, a low CO2, which causes an increase in pH and an increased pH, right? So these two are, are matching up. We know this is what should be happening. So we have an alkalosis and it's, this is going to be a respiratory alkalosis. Okay. So we have an alkal alkalotic pH, and the cause of that is our low CO2. Okay, let's do another one. So number two, we're going to have 751, uh, 42, and 32. Okay, now effect on pH down here, and now let's have a look at this one. So, we start with our pH, we find that that's 751, that's outside our normal range, and it's elevated, right? The pH is, is high, so pH is increased. What about our CO2? Our CO2 is 42, and that's within the normal range of 35 to 45. So our CO2 is normal. Effect on pH, what is a normal CO2? Is that gonna push the pH up or down? No, it's, it's not gonna cause any sort of any um, change in the pH away from normal. So what about our bicarb? Our bicarb is above normal range, right? So we have a, an increased um, bicarb concentration. Now what effect does that have on the, on the pH? Well, we look down here, we find increasing bicarb concentration increases the pH, causes an alkalosis, right? So you should start to see that the effect on pH box should match what's actually happening to the pH. If it doesn't, then there's a bit of a problem and we need to go back and look at whether or not this is, um, if there's been an error in the blood work. But our effect on pH line here should reflect what's actually happening to our pH like it does here. Okay, so, so what does this 751 indicate? It indicates that we have an alkalosis. Okay, so we'll write this, alkalosis. Now, it's not being caused by the CO2 because it's normal, but we do have an increase in bicarbonate um, which is causing an, the pH to go up, which is what's caused our pH to actually go up. So here we have a metabolic alkalosis. Okay, and let's do one more. Number three, we're gonna have 7.62, 32, 
30 and 30. Okay, so let's look at this one. So our pH is increased again. We have another alkalosis, um, right? So this is an alkalosis because the pH is above the normal range, which creates an alkaline um, condition in the blood. How about the CO2? What's that like? So our CO2 is decreased, right? Because it's below 35. Now what effect does that have on the pH? Let's have a look. Decreased CO2 causes increase in pH. Okay, so our, our um, oh, let's just write this effect on pH. So our CO2 is causing the pH to, be, to rise, to become more alkalotic. And what about our bicarb here? So our bicarb is also out of range, but, it, but the bicarb is elevated. So what does an elevated bicarb cause? Well, we have a look here. Elevated bicarb leads to an elevated pH. Okay, so in this case, both the respiratory portion, the CO2, and the metabolic portion, the bicarb, are both causing the pH to rise. So just like in the last video, we now have a combined, or sometimes called mixed alkalosis. Okay, so here's three different situations. We have a respiratory alkalosis, a metabolic alkalosis, and a mixed alkalosis.